So we finally come to the intriguing phenomenon of floating. And also, now is the time to answer the question, how is it that an extremely small stone sinks, but a large ship that weighs a few tons floats? Now, any discussion about the science of floating is incomplete without talking about Archimedes. Yes, the same infamous man who, according to legend, ran naked through the streets of Syracuse shouting Eureka after he discovered how buoyancy works when getting into a bathtub filled with water. To understand how this works, let's first analyze the case where there is a weirdly shaped body inside a fluid, somewhere inside a fluid. Now, what would be the forces acting on this body? There will obviously be forces from the surrounding fluid in all directions, right? And of course, the force of gravity will also be acting on it. Now, let's say it's mg, where m is the mass of our weirdly shaped body. Now, what will be the resultant of all these contact forces? So to answer that, consider another identical container with the same fluid up to the same level. And consider this volume of fluid that has exactly the same shape as that as the object. Now, again draw the FBD for this case. There will be contact forces again from the fluid like this. And of course, the force of gravity, MFT, where MF is the mass of this volume of fluid. Now let's remove that body of fluid and observe the external forces. Now, because it's not moving, it's in equilibrium, right? which means the net force on it has to be zero. And since gravity is applying a force MFG downward, the resultant force of the contact forces has to have a magnitude of MFG, but in the upward direction, right? If the magnitude of the resultant was, let's say, FB, then FB has to be equal to MFG. Now come back to our first case. The surrounding fluid will apply the same force irrespective of what is in this cavity. If you're thinking why, it's because the pressures at these points will remain the same and that does not depend on what is inside. So the forces will also be the same. So which means the resultant of all the contact forces will still be Fb and will have a magnitude of Mfg. So whenever there is an object inside a fluid, the force that the surrounding fluid applies on it will always be in the upward direction. And this force is what we call the buoyant force. So let, let's bring back the free body diagram. We see here that if mg is greater than mfg, then the net force will be downward. So therefore, the body will move down and therefore it will it'll sink. Similarly, if mg is less than mfg, the net force is upward. So the body will move up. Therefore, it will float. In fact, if I write this in terms of densities, where rho is the density of the body, and rho f is the density of the fluid, and v is the volume of the body, then mfg will be equal to rho f vg. Similarly, mg will be equal to rho into vg. So if I substitute this in our equations, I find that for sinking, rho vg should be greater than rho f vg or basically rho should be greater than rho f. And similarly, for floating, rho has to be less than rho f. So whether something sinks or floats depends only on its density. If its density is greater than the density of fluid, it will sink. And if its density is lesser than the density of the fluid, then it will float. And this is why a small piece of iron sinks in water, but a heavy piece of wood can float in water, right? Because it does not depend on mass, it depends on density. And iron is denser than water, whereas wood is less dense than water. So now, let's examine floating in a little more detail. So now, we know what is the condition for floating. But let's analyze what exactly happens during floating. So let's say there's a block that's floating in a fluid like this. Now, what would be the magnitude of buoyant force on it? So if we draw the FBD or the free body diagram of that block, 
there will be obviously an mg downward right and an fb which is upward so mg should be equal to fb because the block is at rest also by the same reasoning that we used in the previous case fb which is the force applied by the surrounding fluid should be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced because uh, see, just like we did in the previous case all you have to do is just remove that block and replace it with an equal with a, a volume of fluid that's equal to the volume that was displaced in the previous case basically fill that cavity with that same fluid now what would be the the force that the surrounding fluid applies on it it will be equal to the weight of that volume only right because that's what is keeping up that volume right so that would be nothing but fb and just because i remove that and place a block over there that magnitude of fb will not change so the magnitude of fb will be equal to the weight of the fluid that was displaced so let's call the mass of the fluid displaced mf and its volume vf so that means fb should be equal to mfg right now from the previous equation if i substitute that i get mg should be equal to mfg now if i write this in terms of their densities i'll get rho into v into g equals rho f into vf into g if i cut off g i basically get vf by v equals rho by rho f so there are two things that we found over here one is the fraction of volume that is submerged that is vf by v is equal to rho by rho f and also the magnitude of the buoyant force is always equal to the weight of the fluid displaced so this fact that whenever there is an object submerged in a fluid it experiences an upward force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced is called archimedes principle and once again this upward force is called buoyant force all right so now you know how density of an object determines whether it will float or sink let's talk about water and ice specifically normally when a material cools down from liquid to solid form all the particles come together and tighten up to become a solid the material's density therefore increases but this is not the case with water when water cools down below 4 degree celsius its density decreases and because of this ice is less dense than water so that means ice would float in water in fact this is the reason why we have gigantic floating icebergs the sinking of the ship titanic wouldn't have happened had it not been for this peculiar property of water and we wouldn't have had an oscar winning movie today and speaking of ships you should now be able to figure out why a ship floats but a stone sinks it's really simple take a simple case like this if i take a square piece of steel of mass m like this and put it in water it would clearly sink why because mf is less than m mf which is the mass of the fluid displaced but if i bend it like this i can make it displace a greater volume of water so therefore mf which is the mass of the fluid displaced will increase and since m doesn't change i just have to make sure that the displaced mf is greater than m and my boat now won't sink in fact i can add more and more cargo onto my boat and i can actually tell exactly how much mass of cargo i can add before it sinks but here wait you should be asking me a question right now because see i told you that something sinks or floats whether something sinks or floats depends on only its density so this piece of steel all i'm doing is just changing its shape and how am i changing its density so the thing is it's slightly more complicated than that what i'm doing when i change its shape is i'm actually basically increasing its volume and i'm reducing the average density of that body so the average density of that body will actually be lesser than the density of water in fact the average density of a ship is lesser than the density of water and that's why it floats now let me give you another visualization to see why we have a buoyant force so let's say we have a liquid like this and there's a block here that's floating okay in that liquid so obviously if you remove that block 
this is the cavity that is creating right okay so let's remove that block and look at this now we also know that this liquid or this fluid basically is made of multiple static balls so let's visualize these balls now at this the the surface over here is obviously applying an upward force on on that floating body right now why is that it's simply because these balls over here to the sides their weight is pushing down and therefore that force is getting transmitted and these balls are pushing up now if instead if i removed these two balls like this right and kept them there now those balls or that surface will not apply any upward force because there is no reason for them to but the moment you place these balls over here they are going to push down and those forces are going to get transmitted and finally these balls are going to push up so this is why this is basically you can say another way to look at why there is buoyant force and also you can see that the force the, because it's only because of these balls the forces that these this surface will apply will be only equal to the weight of the amount of liquid that would be there in that cavity so if there was liquid in that cavity uh, fluid in that cavity the, the force that these this surface applies will be equal to only the, to that weight so if i remove that cavity and irrespective of what i keep there it might be wood it might be anything anything with a lesser density if i place it over there the force will still be the same it can't change 